G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and the round 13 version of Just The Tips. Back again after a little break while I was away, so I thank you for your patience. Going through those annoying buy rounds at the moment, so not every team will play this week. Uh, obviously we had a number of buys last week, so the video might be a little bit shorter, but nonetheless, you know, I was fairly tip happy with my tipping last week. It started badly. I got Port Adelaide wrong. I don't know why I tipped them in hindsight, but you know, home team... Fair enough tip, I reckon. Uh, Collingwood, I did think would beat the Bulldogs. They were too good, but it, it just got better after that. I tipped Hawthorne, felt pretty confident about that one. I tipped St Kilda in the end with West Coast outs, and that played out more or less how I expected it. Geelong should have always beaten Richmond, although it did look dicey there for a while. I did correctly tip Fremantle. I thought they were going to beat the Demons. Never would have guessed in a million years it would be 92 points. That's horrendous. Uh, from a Melbourne perspective, great for Fremantle. I just realised... People are going to pick up on me saying horrendous that Fremantle won. That wasn't an anti-Fremantle thing, but it just speaks to how dire Melbourne are at the moment. But either way, Fremantle will be fantastic. And you can see all my thoughts on every game that happened last week on the football come down, which came out yesterday. And I tipped Gold Coast correctly over Essendon. And they're a very strong home side, and that is the way that game played out. So five out of seven is not bad. Especially when you consider nobody got a perfect seven in any of the competitions. So we'll go through the winners of all our competitions in the True Footy League. So we have a members tipping competition. And the winner this week was Rotor Wash with six correct tips. So again, no one perfect. Uh, although the general tipping winner, uh, forgive me, there was a perfect round with Fan Greit with seven correct tips and a margin of 21. So well done to those guys. The leader overall of the members tipping competition is Grads once again. I think he's been there for, for many weeks now, might even be stretching into months with 75. And the leader is the same one as the last time I did this video and possibly the best name in the league as well with Mystic Di Pasquale with 77 correct tips. So well done, Mystic. And the Fantasy League leader is Hayden, who's been you know pretty much first or second throughout this whole season with an average of 2077, which is great going. Um, I've moved up into the top 250 in the tipping comp. I'm happy with that. Out of over a thousand members, I think it's like nearly 1,200 people in that competition, the general one. I'm happy with the top quarter. I think that's the highest I've been this year. On the topic of members though, I do want to shout out two new members who joined up while I was away. So thank you so much for supporting the channel. We got Ross Clout and we got Tilza, if I'm saying that correctly. So two brand new members in the last two weeks. I want to thank you so much once again. And the channel's been a little bit interrupted over the last couple of months with some travel. Uh, my last trip is this week and then I'll be back for just the tips next week and uh, the footy come down. But in an ideal world, I make plenty of content well in advance for members to enjoy and that will resume as of next week. But for now, I do thank you for supporting the channel. Also, if there's anyone watching who hasn't subscribed to the channel, it would mean a lot to me if you considered subscribing to it to help it grow. Uh, according to my stats, we had 56,000 different people watch a video on this channel in the last 28 days. 26 of those thousand were returning viewers and 30,000 had watched a video for the first time. That's more subscribers than I have in general. So if you are someone who is enjoying the content or you wanna see more AFL content and it hasn't occurred to you necessarily to hit subscribe, it would mean a lot to me if you did, so thank you. All right, we are back again with Squiggle uh, in it once again a shortened round. So this this ladder is looking real interesting. We got Sydney with a game in hand, at six points clear on top. We got Essendon in second, that makes sense. Geelong in third, you know, half time of the Richmond game, you'd imagine like, it's kind of crazy that a team like Geelong at the moment is third. No disrespect, but they're in a form slump. Um, but you look at the ladder, it's a bit of a hot mess of inconsistent but good teams. You've got Fremantle up in six. You've got both expansion sides inside the eight. Collingwood, Melbourne sitting outside the eight. Hawthorne looking shit hot in 12th. Could be on the way up. Brisbane still li like lingering between the teams, trying to make the eight and the bottom four. Like They're still not completely out of the woods there. Bear in mind, I think they have a game in hand. And then we still probably have a bottom three there that are more or less locked in. I don't expect that bottom three to change. So it's starting to take shape, but also by the same token, like I really don't know how to order these teams in terms of predicting the end of this season. But anyway, let's talk about the Crows and Richmond. So the Crows, last week, probably disappointed with how that game went against Hawthorne a bit. I think Hawthorne are a very good team at the moment and won five of their last seven. And we started to see them have a few issues resurface around, you know, winning plenty of the football in the middle of the ground and not converting them into inside 50s. They had the top five possession winners on the ground and only 41 inside 50s, which was minus 22. But over the stretch, it's been a reasonable run of form. The week that I missed, they beat West Coast by 100 points, but across the board, like, there's generally been much better form. And Richmond, you know, it started to get dire there. It is from an injury point of view, but a 20-goal loss at the Gabba, I think they've come back, you know, relatively strongly. To be five goals up at GMHBA, even though the Cats are out of form, that's very commendable, even if it came at the cost of two new injuries. So they're probably going to use 42 players. 
by the end of this round, I would have thought. And I just think the adversity is piling up. And while there was a spirited performance, I just can't back him in to do it at the Adelaide Oval. I think they beat Adelaide at Adelaide Oval early last year, like round two, but I just can't see in this current form and you know injury list that getting close. So I'm going to tip Adelaide by a healthy 47 points here. The Bulldogs versus the Brisbane Lions at Docklands. Uh, or Marvel Stadium as it's called. So the Dogs are quietly putting together some reasonable form. Like they beat Collingwood. Yeah, they're injury depleted. Um, you know, I said this in the footy come down, but if you look at their run of form, we reacted big time to the Hawthorne loss. But when you look at the form Hawthorne are in now, that's not looking so bad. And then also Fremantle subsequently have played pretty well. Um, they're a hard team to meet in Perth. So the Dogs are tracking okay. One of the best clearance sides, if not, I think they're the, the best clearance side in the competition, or at least scores from stoppage. So, so their stoppage game is really strong. And they come up against the Brisbane Lions side that is coming off a bye and then had a 20-goal win against... Richmond the week before. I mean, their injury loss list as well is also not great. They're at the point of the season where, you know, another loss probably rules them out of finals. Maybe not mathematically, but, you know, emotionally. It feels like it feels like it's treading that way. I feel like the dogs are in some reasonable form here with Brisbane's, you know, unavailable players. I'm not sure exactly where that sits, actually, if, if they're getting a few players back. But either way, on, on exposed form and this being at Marvel, I feel pretty confident in the dogs, even if they're going to be without at least... Sam Darcy and they might have lost a couple of other players like Harms uh, due to injury last week. But either way, I just I really don't have any confidence in Brisbane winning this game. So it might be close, but uh, it, it'll be a 16 point win to the Bulldogs is my prediction. So this game has potential. Hawthorne versus the Giants down at Launceston. I, like I, I just talked about Hawthorne and the ripping form they're in. Five of their last seven. You know, pretty good form down in Tassie as well, off the top of my head. Very good against the Crows, opening up a 50-point lead at the MCG. Dylan Moore was outstanding. I think that this is a horrible time to play Hawthorne. I think they've clicked into a gear that is going to beat some very good teams this year if they can sustain it. And GWS is a very good team. They had a bit of a form slump. They were pretty good against Geelong. That was pre the bye, so, you know, it's it's... Difficult to forecast what version of GWS will come out after the buy, but this could actually be a very good game between two good sides at the moment. I'm intrigued to see it. I'm just looking at their head-to-head -head here, and they haven't actually played at this ground since 2017 where they had a draw. So looking at how GWS play at UTAS is uh, is actually not too straightforward. So I'm going to have to go off form lines here, and I think coming off the buy, I'm going to go Hawthorne. Like I, I think Hawthorne, I would tip against a lot of sides in the comp right now. To be honest, like other than maybe a top handful with the inconsistency of so many of these teams, I think we go the Hawks here by 18 points. Now we have a battle of the ages between the Eagles and North Melbourne at Optus Stadium. It's quite strange to see these sides meet in round 13. I would have liked to have seen these two sides meet early, although not too early because North started the year all right and we didn't. So, you know, anything after round four would have been good. But interestingly, like the two worst sides of the comp over the last couple of years meeting in round 13. We've had to wait for this blockbuster, haven't we? Um, obviously, it's been a tale of two different seasons. North Melbourne's still winless. Um, can't really sugarcoat this season. They haven't really gotten close to winning a game yet. Closest winning, losing margin was 26 points in round two. And then since then, the closest losing margin was 38 against St Kilda. Um, you know, there's been some good individual bright sparks for them. But, you know, there's not a lot going right and not a lot to make a compelling argument on paper as to why they could win this game. But I do think they're a, a chance to win this game, no doubt. West Coast have had a pretty poor couple of weeks. Um, you know, losing to St Kilda isn't a disgrace, but they've looked tired. And I think West Coast are gettable. And the week before that, they lost by 100 points to the Crows and showing a real dichotomy between their home form and their away form at the moment. Harley Reid's going to be out, um, but they might be bolstered by Tim Kelly and Jake Waterman coming back in. I know I can think of a number of players for North Melbourne who like playing West Coast. And last year, we had two games between them decided by five points. Look, I'm going to cut to, to the chase here. I think West Coast has been far better than North this year. And at Optus Stadium, even without Harley Reid, who's probably in the top handful of Eagles players at the moment, and probably the number one offensive threat at West Coast, oh, probably not. Probably Jake Waterman is actually, but if this was an on-paper simulated game, I'd be confident in West Coast. But I just think, I actually think North might win this. Um, I don't know. It's just a gut feeling. I think North will win one. And I, I think the mentality piece will come into this where I think North Melbourne will look at West Coast as gettable. And if West Coast isn't up to the challenge mentally, then I think this game is up for grabs big time, even if North haven't really demonstrated some meaningful form. North will win a game. I'm going to tip North Melbourne here, potentially in the wet, which will suit their smalls. I might piss off a few people here, but this is a genuine feeling. And, I'm, you know, I had a feeling that Fremantle would beat Melbourne, and, and sometimes I just trust my gut. And I, I, this is a gut feel. I think North will win this, but West Coast still finish higher. 
St Kilda versus the Gold Coast Suns at Marvel Stadium. This will be interesting. St Kilda have not looked very good, um, you know, for a number of weeks now. Like since they beat Collingwood, they had one win over North and then just beat West Coast in a somewhat lackluster affair. But I will give credit for a gutsy win. They're still stuck at it and were better for longer and deserve the win. Um, you know, and, and there's been some better teams in St Kilda who have gone to Perth and, and not looked so good. Well, I'm talking about Melbourne, um, but also, you know, Fremantle got shocked in the Derby. So, you know, credit where it's due. Could that be a catalyst for some better form? You know, they come up against the Gold Coast side who currently sit in the eight with seven wins and five losses, who, again, probably a lot better at home than they are away. And St Kilda at Marvel, you know... Maybe not this year, but in general, I think they're a pretty good Marvel team. These two sides had a knack for producing a really close game for a while there. I'm not sure exactly where that sits. Um, but, you know, I think Gold Coast have clearly been the better team of these two sides. And, you know, off the top of my head, how are they at Marvel? Well, I know they beat Richmond there last year, and Richmond wasn't completely horrific. So I, I don't think the ground holds any fears for them. Maybe it does for Damien Hardwick. But, you know, the midfield prowess of the Suns at the moment, I think, should have St Kilda covered. And uh, the, the scoring power, I, I think, I feel pretty confident. I'll be surprised if St Kilda win this. So I'm going to say the Gold Coast Suns win this by 22 points. Sydney versus Geelong at the SCG. Now, this is a first versus third clash with the Cats not looking in great form. A real trend of starting games poorly. I want to say they were 49 points down against Port Adelaide and nearly won. They were a way down against the Giants and nearly won. They got five goals down against Richmond and then did win with a huge second half. So there's something... A little bit lacklustery going on at Geelong. I don't know if it's a training loads thing, but a huge dip in form, and it's been a tale of two halves of this season. But that does not mean that they won't come out and win this because that is Geelong, and that is the Geelong way. So I'm still anticipating a good game. But there's no real question marks on Sydney. They've been fantastic. Six-point lead at the top of the ladder with a game in hand, and one loss to Richmond, which is one of the biggest outliers of a football season I can remember. So, you know, it's hard to back against Sydney, but I do respect this Geelong side as an anywhere, anytime team, and it's hard to back against them even when their form is bad. And the fact that it's been bad for five weeks makes me think that might correct itself soon. So could be a close game. You'd be a brave man to tip against Sydney. It could happen, but the percentage is 150%. My God, they're just number one team by the length of Flemington. So I'm going to tip the Swans here, but I'd be shocked if the Cats let this blow out. So I'm expecting a good game. It goes Swans by 18. Essendon versus Carlton is an absolute ripper of a game, I reckon, potentially. Essendon have not really done too much wrong this year. And again, another honourable loss against the Suns at, Mar at um, People's First, rather, I think is, you know, it's an honourable loss and they still sit second on the ladder. And while the percentage isn't good, you know, I think they've been fairly consistent this year. Three losses interstate to the Swans, the Power, and now Gold Coast. There are only three losses this year. So they're an imposing challenge here for Carlton. And Carlton have probably shown a little bit of inconsistency to be sitting 8-4 and four and 108%. Like, you know, their best has been good. And, you know, sometimes they've looked a little bit off the pace. But I think their weapons exceed what Essendon have, to be honest. I think that, you know, their best 22 strength is a little bit better. And they are coming off a very good win, a very well-rounded, comprehensive win against the power in Adelaide. This will be a ripper, but I think I'm going to tip the strong, the side that I think is stronger. If Essendon win this, this is, again, another step for them. And they could win it. I legitimately think Essendon could win this game, but I think the best version of Carlton is better. And I think they'll rise for the occasion. And they're a big, big game team. So I'll say four points. I'll say this is the game they're around. Collingwood versus Melbourne. Two sides coming off a disappointing loss to different extents. Collingwood... Maybe it's harsh to say disappointing. I think they were pretty valiant in defeat considering the adversity. You know, a lot of players missing. Pendlebury, Mychek, Jamie Elliott, um, Dugowie. There's a lot going against Collingwood from that respect. Whereas Melbourne, by contrast, are just, it's self-inflicted. Their form has been poor, like really poor against Fremantle. What a terrible off day that was. To be sitting 7-5 and five, as I look at it on the ladder there on the live. 11th with 7-5. and five, That's crazy. But I do think... We might see a response from the Ds here. I don't think it's indicative of their overall form. I mean, in the last three weeks, they also lost to West Coast, but I thought West Coast played really well. There's no doubt Fremantle played well as well, but I think, you know, you contrast those two performances. So, geez, I don't really know about this one. I think Collingwood is probably the logical tip on form, but I think, you know, I'm, the trend of this video is I'm going to go with gut. And, um, you know, I'm informed with my tips, so maybe that will ruin me. 
but I think I'm gonna actually tip the D's to make a statement here. This will be an upset. You, you combine a couple of things, Melbourne needing a response and Collingwood's injury list that at the moment they've done a pretty good job of withstanding. They just lost their first game since round three. But I reckon we might see a dip here from Collingwood. This is a gut feel one. Not because I think Melbourne are better. I think Collingwood are better. But I think the D's, uh, and I think similar to last year, I think the D's beat the Pies, didn't they? I'll say the D's win this game narrowly. Seven points. So that is it. That is my new look ladder. So if I get this right, uh, which I won't, but uh, just for funsies, we've got Sydney, Carlton, then Essendon. The race for the 17th Premiership hots up with Collingwood down in 11th there. Port Adelaide fourth, that seems odd considering some of their form has been lacklustre. But, you know, that that's just the tail of this season, isn't it? Gold Coast up to sixth, Geelong down in fifth if they lose. Fremantle holding their spot in the eighth. And if Melbourne can beat Collingwood, they're back in seventh. Then I, that's just a gut feel. GWS down in tenth feels weird, but there's some teams outside the eight that should probably be there. Hawthorne up in twelfth. Brisbane, if, assuming they lose, probably out of the finals race, you'd think, considering the team, the quality of teams above them. And uh, the bottom four remains the same. So let me know in the comments, guys, what your tips are and predictions. What do you think of mine? Again, I've thrown a few rogue ones out there. I tip north, upset of the round. I, th I have a feeling about this. And I actually have a pretty good knack of tipping West Coast big upsets, like big upset losses. I feel I can feel them coming pretty well. On the other hand, I have not tipped West Coast once this entire season. If there's ones where I tip them in just the tips, I, I change it at the last minute. That was the Gold Coast one. So maybe I'm wrong and I'm being overly negative, but gut feel, North Melbourne will beat West Coast. And game of the round's got to be Carlton and Essendon, more so than Collingwood Melbourne. I think Carlton and Essendon is the one. Is the one. Even better than Sydney Geelong. There's some good games. But anyway, let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.